The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Hello everyone and welcome to Open Friday, the one and only talk show bringing the best of Bronx, New York and the world straight to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host e Cafe Con Leche, Friday mornings and here's a taste of today's show. First stop, new events to check out in our Open Weekend Preview, then we'll hear about some marketing tips you can apply into your personal life. After that, a touching story of a woman who beat breast cancer and turned it, turned the experience into an art. And our good friend Bobby C has the latest sports in his sports roundup and in our open artist spotlight, a sneak peek of the Bronx Revolution and birth of hip hop with an internationally acclaimed pioneer B-girl. So get ready because now we are officially open. Open Friday once again. I'm Rina Valentin, your host in Cafe Con Leche for the next hour. And remember, we are always inviting you to stay in touch with us. Check us out on Twitter at BronxNet TV or on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter too at Rina Valentin. Don't miss out on anything. Make sure you keep in touch. All right, we're gonna just get right into some things to do with our open weekend preview. First up, the Jerome Gun Hill Bid Festival. The Jerome Gun Hill Bid Improvements puts on one of the biggest events in the area, and this year is no exception. An all-day concert series and well-known personalities, uh, food stands, hundreds of vendors, and even a tribute to the late Ibrahim Gonzalez. The party starts Saturday, September 21st at 11 a.m. and goes to 6 p.m. at Jerome Avenue between East Gun Hill Road and Marshall Parkway. And that's on East 208th Street between the Cows and Jerome Avenue in the Bronx. For more info, you can go to JeromeGunHillBid.org. Next, Moesa Showcase at Brooklyn Exposure. Come celebrate a night of great music with soul uh, with past Open Friday artist, A Lyric. That's right, that's happening on Saturday, September 21st at 7 p.m. at Brooklyn Exposure, which is located at 1401 Bedford Avenue in Brooklyn. And for more info, you can call Brooklyn Exposure at 718-738-8220. And finally, passages at Andrew Friedman House. Just in time for Hispanic Heritage Month. 20 artists converge on the Andrew Friedman House to celebrate Hispanic life and culture. That's Thursday, September 26th at 5.30 p.m. And the event, or actually the exhibit, runs through October 10th, 2013. The Andrew Friedman Home is located at 1125 Grand Concourse, and of course, that's in the Bronx. For more on this exhibit, you can check out visionesculturales.com and or you can go to facebook.com visionesculturales. Oh my goodness, what's going on with this Spanish? Culturales, it's cultural. In Spanish. All right, that's it. That's what we have for you this weekend. And you know, the fall is in full effect now. So defend yourself against that wind this weekend. <laughs> and uh, well, we're going to move on to our colorful friend, Gail. And uh, you know, we're going to see what's going on in our preparation for that wonderful 5K that's going on in Van Cortland. What's doing, girl? Where are you? Hey. Hey. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fabulous. You're fabulous. Of course. Oh my goodness, look at your shoes. Are you <gasps> feeling them? Oh, 
You went in my closet, didn't you, girl? I did. You know, I'm actually considering uh, doing what you said, which is, what, what was it you, you've been working on in heels, right? You're going to train in your heels? <laughs> Kidding, silly girl. Well, yeah, I know, but you know, somewhere in my next life, I want to, I want to be reborn as an animated uh, figure so that I can do everything in heels. I think you have potential. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, going back to this 5K, right? So. Uh, just in case, I just want to share with everyone. So Van Cortland actually has this amazing calendar that's go that begins uh, in the fall. There are uh, 100 years of cross cross country, cross -country trail. trails, and um, and Bronxnet is actually celebrating its 20th anniversary. Go Bronxnet! Yeah, hey, Bronx Net. woo woo! Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. So and of course, you know, we're actually going to be a part of this, right? So that's right. There's going to be fitness and, and there's going to be warm-ups done by some Bronxnet celebrities and non-celebrities. And I understand that you, my dear, are running. I am. <laughs> I am. I'm, What's your I, training been like? You know, it's been really interesting, uh, this whole journey of Rena Gets Lean uh, in trying all these different methods of, of training. And, and the one thing I, I have come and have concluded to is that calisthenics and cardiovascular are the way to go. And, Absolutely. And I've always, always, always wanted to run a marathon. I want to run the New York City Marathon. So that, when I was... That's a big goal. What? That's a big goal. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to aim for that for next year. Oh, I think you could do it. I think so, too. Yeah, stick to it. Awesome. <laughs> well, I think the 5K was a great way to, like, get me jump-started. Yes, absolutely. So, Start out small. Right. And then build your way up. Right. A 10K, and then a half marathon. Awesome. Oh boy, this is exciting. Oh my gosh, you just went fast forward. <laughs> I'm like, can I breathe? <laughs> <laughs> catch your breath, catch half a marathon. You need some yeah. water? Oh, goodness. You know, it's just more than anything, it's just the discipline and, and then overcoming the ailments that come from being a new mom who happened to have a C-section childbirth <laughs> that affects my back. And while they may sound like excuses, they actually have been the problem behind my uh, consistency. Even though I've been consistent, I get back to, you know, I, I kind of have to I Are you stop. working with a trainer? Is your trainer helping you or are you doing this on your own? Well, it, I, both because I, I, my schedule is so radical that I, it's, it's a hit and miss. Like one week I'll work with a trainer, maybe a couple of weeks will go by and I have to just self-discipline and do it on my own. Oh. So it, it's, it's a combination. I, un I understand. I, you know, when I was training, I, I'm, I can't really be in the run this year because I kind of hurt myself and I got a little down and I've just been really tired and my soul is broken. Oh, uh, I don't. And I really just, I want to be there and I don't know if I can, but you know, if you're going to be there, Rena, I will cheer you on from the sidelines, girl. You will? Absolutely. Yeah, in I my guess, heels. Oh man, you know, in your heels. I was actually looking forward to seeing you run in your heels. <sighs> I, I can't. I have heel spurs. What, what, what's going on? We're still working on that animated portion of your existence? Yeah, you know, sometimes <laughs> I just don't feel very animated. Oh. I oh. get really lazy and I just stand around, you know, looking around. I know, but it's October 27th. We have time to work on that, don't I, we? Do you think so? I you, hope. You think I can do it in a month? I think so. I mean, I, I, I'm doing it in a month. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I think you have a little bit more freedom to move around than I do. Oh. Okay. All right. I have I have a very strict job, and it requires me to stand all day. My feet are killing me. It's it's really hard. I you know what, sweetheart? His to working on being unlimited list. Word. <laughs> <laughs> go go, Gail, my animated girl. I love it. I love it. All right. So we're gonna have this conversation. We're gonna continue to have this conversation about Van Cortland, right? Because it's October twenty oh. seventh, yes. and we're gonna work on you becoming unlimited list so that maybe you can actually possibly go beyond just being the cheerleader on the on the sidelines. That's right. And you know what's really cool is that the all the proceeds from this event will go to the Van Cortland Park Conservancy storm resiliency efforts. They're hiring specialized staff to keep the cross county paths passable for after storms and to stave off erosion. Isn't that really cool? That's very cool and thank you for sharing that. No problem. All I like right. to share. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful thing because we're all about uh, helping each other. So thanks, Gail. No problem, Mina. See you soon. All right. Wonderful.
All right, so uh, we do have to take a quick break, and after the break, we'll actually, we're actually going to talk about personal branding. <laughs> yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Hello, and welcome back to Open, our first guest. In the studio is a branding expert, and uh, actually he works with a branding expert, but I guess we could consider him a branding expert now, who uh, he, because he actually joined forces with another author, and uh, they actually uh, wrote a book about how to find the love of your life. Please welcome Bill Vernick to the show. Hello. Hi, nice is is it you. Bill or William? I mean, Bill. the formal name is William, but you're okay with being called Bill? Yeah, all right. So I, I just did, you know, because originally she was supposed to come with you, right? Yeah, sure. Um, Claire Farber, yeah. your co author, Absolutely. and she's actually the marketing expert, but you, so well, am you're, I. you're I, the marketing expert. Yeah, as we, well. we okay. worked together in marketing for about 15 years. Oh, okay. And uh, we do advertising and marketing and we decided to write a book because why not? <laughs> right, so, right, right. Well, but I'm from the Bronx. You're so from the Bronx, yeah, right? That's from why. From Jersey, that's so I'm, <laughs> that's why I'm here. You know. <laughs> He's like, I'm from the Bronx, so yeah. I'm wrapping the Bronx. She's from Jersey, and of course, who needs that, right? No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> okay. No, it, it's just based on the bios that I read. It's, it's kind of like a very interesting marriage. Uh, it, yeah. It, if, if we'll say, I mean, it's not a marriage well, marriage. Not to each other, but right, yeah, right. Exactly, just right. In, in actually writing the book and, right, and, right. and branding because you actually have a film background. And, yeah, and, exactly. and so that loaning itself to her marketing and, and you guys coming together to actually brand people on their in their personal lives. Right, is is right. that like a way of saying, like, oh, where we are all the creators of our own life? Well, um, it's more based on. The products you buy. Now, this is not women. Women actually can judge for themselves. When they, a woman goes shopping, she really doesn't mind shopping. Whereas if you've ever dragged a man to a store, it's a horrible experience because men do not like to shop for the right. most part. So what we found out was that um, a woman told us at a focus group that um, she used to, well, let's say by the fifth date when she made it back to the guy's apartment, if he was that lucky, she would excuse herself, go to the bathroom, and then go through his medicine cabinet. And she started looking through the products. And the whole point was, by the products, she was trying to judge who this guy was. Hmm. And as we were talking before the show, um, men have a tendency to lie to women almost continuously. No! Even, even after 30 years of marriage. No! Go, yes, exactly. I mean, uh, well, so do women. I mean, come on, you know, right? I mean, right? no, it's just nice to hear it come from a man. Exactly, now. exactly. It's so nice to hear a man say, you know, men lie. They're liars. I mean, no. That's it. There's no, there's no doubt about it. And so, what we decided to do was say, um, how do these products typecast a man? And hmm. usually, typecasting is bad, but in this case, we think it's good because you get to know a guy a little no, bit I think more. That, it's funny because now you're says. using film language, right? You're well, like, there you go. How exactly. do we typecast it? So it's okay. Exactly. Go ahead. This is exactly. so interesting. Continue. So, <laughs> so uh, what happened was um, when we were at this this focus group, a number of women said the same thing. They said, "Yeah, I'd like to go through his garage, see what products he has there. What does he have in his fridge? What does he have under the sink? What kind of cleaning products?" 
and what emerged was um, we noticed that some guys like that had a lot of cleaning products. Um, they also had a bunch of Q-tips, you know, the big 500 pack. And so we, we created Q-tip guy. Now, <laughs> he's not like an OCD kind of guy, okay. but he's very organized. <laughs> okay. And turns out he's not bad material for a husband because he'll do everything. He'll do your taxes. He'll do windows. He'll do all kinds of stuff like Based that. Based on yeah. having 500 Q-tips? Well, he likes to use the Q-tips in lots of different ways. We, we did a marketing project for Q-tips <laughs> a few years ago, and we discovered oh, that guys like Q-tips even more than women, you know, because what they do is they use them to clean their computers. They, they put them on a drill to kind of like make them like spin around and clean different things and stuff, and they use it for detail work on their cars and stuff. So Q-tip guy is... Sort of like I said, he's a good candidate for marriage because he will, he's organized and he likes tools and he knows how to take care of stuff. He can sort of fix the refrigerator if the door is kind of ajar. It probably will still be ajar by the time he's done, but you won't have to call the repairman or the super. So there you go. So what you're saying, in essence... Yeah, you can't believe this, right? Huh? <laughs> All because of... It, or if only you'd known you're before. Able to say, really? I mean, it's like, you know I'm going in the cabinets looking for Q-tips Well, now. there you go. Exactly. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so what you're saying is this book actually has uh, references to just little nuances that actually yeah. say a lot about a person. Absolutely. You know, there's a, there's a guy we call Beamer Guy. Now, he, of course, drives a Beamer. If, if he can make enough money, he'll drive a Beamer. He's a very particular kind of guy as well. It's all about money. Right. He's usually a corporate killer. Right. You know, he tries to become the president by stabbing the current president. You right. Know, that kind of thing. Right, right, right. And there are certain types of women that like to marry corporate killers. Right. And he's your guy. Because right. Because he's usually pretty good looking. He's effective. He gets you into good restaurants and that sort of thing. Right. Not everybody's cup of tea, which brings me to another guy called Celestial Seasonings guy. He Celestial is. Seasonings guy? Yes. Would that be tea? That would be tea. But <laughs> it's also about <laughs> yoga and spirituality. Right. And so this is a guy that, you know, you can actually have a conversation with. He's going to lie as well. But, I mean, he... He He's going to lie as well. Oh, yeah, of course. I, 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 I just see, love this. You, I love that I'm you gotta start with the idea man that all men that it doesn't will lie. matter what they're into, they're going to lie. They're going to lie. That's it, you know? That's Except <laughs> in the Bronx. They don't lie in the oh, Bronx. Oh, they, you know? they, the only men Absolutely that don't lie are the not. men from the Bronx, exactly. they say now. And I was born in the Bronx <laughs> and play softball in Van Cortlandt. I still live there, you know? But anyway, no, that's completely untrue. So I was just lying when I said that, right? Okay. <laughs> but anyway, proof. Celestial Seasonings guy is more spiritual. Uh, he does yoga, he has practiced to the point where he does yoga better than women. So women, he'll go to a, a female class and he'll make them all hate his guts because he's better at the different moves. Like, I could never do yoga. Right, right, right. right. He's like really that. extended. He has exactly. really long. Exactly, exactly. And he can sit there and breathe in the pose. Right, right. And, and I don't want to say this because this is a family show, but right. that means he's good at other things Right, as well. right. Of so, course, it right. loans itself to other thoughts. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly. So yes. Celestial is an interesting guy to a lot of women. We've heard some good <laughs> stories about this guy. Do you have anything on mixed martial arts? Well, um, <laughs> the little guys think that they can, you know what I mean? It's sort of like, you know, yeah, I know how to do that, you know, and yeah, I can field strip an M16, you know, but, you know, I don't think that really is, like, a good skill for these days anyway. Um, no, there's actually, like, a bunch of different guys, if I may. You know, yes, um, please, because this is yeah. so interesting. Okay, yeah, and, and, you know, there's something, like, you can have fun with this. We think it's a funny book, again, called Brand Guys. By the way, I was told to say that as many times as possible because um, we didn't do it in the last interview, but right. in any case... Um, what this book does is it gives you, like, lots of different things. So, for instance, it'll tell you, let's say we have Q-tip guy here. Right. Personality, um, looks and clothes, uh, what the first date is going to be like, um, you know, stuff like that. Colors, what, I see. Yeah, There's right, like life partner, you know, that kind of thing. So before you go on the date, you're going to sort of know what to expect. Okay, so and, yeah. basically what you're saying, excuse me, is yeah. <clears throat> you assess according to the definitions within the category that they fall into. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and this, is, this actually has basis in reality. We interviewed hundreds of guys. We interviewed hundreds of women that had gone out with guys like that. And we got pretty much the same story from everybody. 
And it was, if we looked in their medicine cabinets, they had basically the same stuff. You know, the thousand count Advil is sort of like a good thing for that guy. But, you know, there's also Bud Guy. For instance, Bud Guy is everybody's guy. He's sort of um, average American guy. He's found in every city. He's found in country, you know, the countryside. He's found in the Bronx. He likes working on his car. He's like a normal everyday guy. And guess what he drinks? He drinks Budweiser. That's it, you know. And, Women, first they say, well, he's kind of like he wears the same sweatshirt for 25 years, right. but, but he won't throw it away. Right. But he's a solid guy. If you want a family, you want to depend on this guy, he's not going to cheat on you. He's the least likely guy to lie. But he's the least likely exactly, guy to lie, exactly. but not that he's not going to lie. Well, he's going to lie a little bit. I mean, come on. You know, I mean, <laughs> you got to lie. I mean, everyone's got to tell a story, right? You know? <laughs> Like I said, I'm lying right now. I mean, I, you know, sort of like, right? I mean, come on, really. Like, <laughs> you know, I, well, while you were speaking, I just saw the warning sign at the bottom. Yeah, of the there's book. a skull and crossbones like there. Yeah, right, a skull exactly. and bones, yeah, like, you know, let, like let a me, hazard. Let yes, let me, let me please read that. Read that. Okay. It's hilarious. This is so, about the Q-tip guy, by the way. This is Q-tip guy. It says, warning. It's great when he picks up after you, but his lectures on how to fold the towels correctly might not make neatness much fun. So he's going to do the windows. He's going to fold the towels. He's going to do the laundry. But he's going to lecture you if you, like, leave your stuff around. He's going to go pick it up. In other words, it's a little bit of a role reversal, which mo mostly Norman women do with uh, other men. But let me see if we get off Q-tip guy for a second here. Because there, there's some interesting guys here. Um, okay, let's see. You know, uh, yeah. just the fact that you actually wrote this book, this book, it, seem, it, it looks fun to read. I it looks it like, it actually looks like a, a, a great date book, you know, a book that you actually take when you go out on a date well, and I you pull so. it out and figure yeah. out what category they, they fall under. <laughs> well, yeah, in fact, though, what we say is that if you can ask him some innocent questions via email, right. like describe your uh, medicine chest, what's in there? Right. And they're going to say, well, why are they, because men are not going to read this. There's right, no way. but, but, the, but you know. are they going to tell the truth? I mean, we, you know. Well, they're going to tell the truth tell, about they're that. They're not going to tell the truth. If, like, I'll tell you what I got in my medicine chest, you know. It's like, because, you know, you don't think that you're really being quizzed. If you right. ask him what his life goals are, he's definitely going to lie. Right. He's going to say he wants to be president of the United States or right. he wants to, you know, whatever, which is right. complete provocation. Right. But, you know, for instance, <laughs> you know, oh, here's another. Here's a good one. Abercrombie guy. Uh-huh. Abercrombie. You go out with this guy because he's, he he's dresses the right? really, yes, he dresses <laughs> really well, right. and he gets you into great clubs. Uh -huh. You know, like uh -huh. uh, whatever the best club is on this side of town, he can get, no, no, you don't have to stand behind the velvet rope, right. he'll get you in. Right. And he looks great. Right. The only problem is when you meet his mother, his mother's going to laugh at you because he looks much better than any woman he ever goes out with. That's the whole idea. Got it. And he's a little bit clubby also. You have to hang out with 10 of his buds. Right. So, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So, but right. he's a good guy. He's, he's sort of like, he grows with you, you know, but he looks good. That's the thing. This, you know, the, it looks like you guys had a lot of fun writing this We book. did. We actually did. I mean, writing, I write uh, TV commercials, I write screenplays. They're a little bit on the tedious side. This was actually fun to write because some of the stories, you know, we got from real life and you know we were just able to talk to people and they gave us some good stuff some good stories so it wasn't completely making everything up and um well it wasn't making anything up see that sounds like i'm lying right well, now. well i don't know <laughs> at this point i don't know what to believe could that comes out of your mouth exactly right <laughs> yeah. you know you're just you've just been validating i'm a guy oh right but there of course go. right <laughs> but a guy to takes a guy to know a guy so, you know, et cetera. True. True. But we, we do hope but that... But the book is for women. <laughs> the book is for women. The book is for women. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we hope that it'll come somewhere between, like, let's say if you go on one of the dating services, you will whip out the book and say, let me find out what this guy is really, because it's not in the story he's telling you online. That's, forget that. Throw that out right <laughs> away. It's completely meaningless, right? You know? Right. And check out what's going on in his life, the products he buys. And, you know, it's worked. I mean, people have, now we, it's not in the vows column in the Times yet, but we think that once the book gets more distribution, who knows, maybe we'll have a couple of weddings based on this. You know, they marry a Q-tip guy or something. You nice, know. nice, we'll, we'll, nice. We'd like, and like that. We'd like and, that. Then, and then you'll just write the, the actual sequel, which well, is the sequel, Matchmakers. We'll, exactly. <laughs> it'll be the story of, we'll get a website, you know, and we'll, you know, match guys. We have to know is like what the guy's products are. Nice. That's and we'll it. have you back on that. I'd love to. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for being Thank here you. with us. Thank you. William Vernick, uh, along with co-author Claire Farber, wrote the book Brand Guys. Find out which brand of guy is right for you and find the love of your life. And if you can actually find the book, Brand Guys, on Amazon.com or you can go to brandguys.org or you can visit BillVernick.com.
All right, we'll be back with my colors of cancer. Here, open front. Don't go anywhere. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. Long before I was in Hollywood, I had a grandmother by the name of Estelle Marie Tavern. Positive role models to make sure that I was on a straight path. Big brothers, big sisters carefully screens volunteers and places them in long-term mentoring matches with kids who face adversity. With more volunteers, especially men, and more donations, every little who needs a big can have it. Start something. If it's been a while since you've been involved, start something again. Learn more at BigBrothersBigSisters.org. Welcome back to Open. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and our next guest, well, you know, she took her personal tragedy and turned it into an artist's muse. Please welcome to the show artist Esther Pagan with her curator, Bill Aguado. Hello. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And uh, Esther, we're, I would like to introduce you first and uh, your journey. Uh, we, we actually had Esther on the show about two years ago. Um, Esther is an amazing artist and a writer and a poet. Uh, but we had you on actually displaying these wonderful hats. It was one of my favorite shows, as a matter of fact. So thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and so after we had you on the show, you actually went through uh, a pretty uh, threatening, life-threatening situation. Would you like to share? Sure. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer September 17th, and I opted to have a double mastectomy uh, October 17th. And since then, I've had um, surgeries every three months, and I just had a surgery a week ago, which is my fifth surgery. And I'm almost done with my breast cancer reconstruction. But in the interim, I wanted to write about it because writing was part of my healing process. And I started a journal. And then someone said to me, why don't you start a blog and, you know, put out all the information that you've bumped into and experienced and share with the public what your journey is like. And that's what I did. I started My Colors of Cancer. 
My Colors of Cancer, it's an interesting title. And uh, and then, of course, you know, you have Bill Aguado, who actually has curated My Colors of Cancer. So My Colors of Cancer went from being a blog to an actual art exhibition, which is going to be opening in another week or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Bill Aguado, who is a Bronx leader here, who is semi-retired, has taken this on. Now, what made you decide to take this particular arts project on? Well, you know, it's cancer is it's a plague that affects all of us. Uh, breast cancer, obviously, you know, has done its damage to to women, and the fact that Esther had no insurance, had no guidance, had to make these life choices for herself is pretty indicative of the strength of of our community, Puerto Rican woman, and what she has to go through, but it's also indicative of the lack of proper health services and insurance for our 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 our, our neighborhoods in the South Bronx and throughout, where we have people of color living, and I felt that her exhibit is a saga of survival, a saga of a woman's determination to. Uh, make her own choices and survive and and, my, and I'm an only child my mother was a cancer survivor over 40 years ago so I remember the pain she went through and I felt that this is a voice that needs to be heard this is a voice and uh, that needs to be affirmed and this is a voice that we all have to listen to and you know just going back to the insurance issue you had shared something with me off air prior <clears throat> prior to this segment uh regarding the uh circumstances in which you were informed that you were you had breast cancer um which loaned itself to the type of insurance you have which is a little disturbing and and i would love for you to share with everyone um i was assessing a client um, i'm a massage therapist and she gave me information on how to get low income insurance, which I did. And when I went to my physician who I had gone to for many years and asked if he accepted my insurance, he said yes. And um, I went to him and, and went through different exams and I went for a mammogram. And um, then I got a bill in the mail and I called the office to ask if indeed he did accept my insurance and he said no, that he didn't. Well, when he um, got my results from my mammogram, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and he called me to tell me on the phone that I had breast cancer because of my insurance, because he did not participate with the insurance that I had. Wow, I am still gasping for air because it, that's so impersonal. Uh, and you're telling me that based on the fact that your insurance, he didn't cover your insurance, um, he didn't accept your insurance, I should say, he didn't feel compelled to have you come into the office and share those, that news with you in person, rather just tell you on the phone and Correct. Kind of Correct. dismiss it. Correct. Not only dismiss it, he referred her, he transferred her to someone else in his office to give her resources. Wow. I'm really sorry that you had to go through that, but here's the beauty mm -hmm. of everything that you that you've experienced. You were able to make colors out of it, right? And that's what we're here to talk about is the fact that you're able to take this tragedy and actually put uh, this put a voice together in an artistic form so that people can not only come to terms with the fact that you're right. This is a plague that is it's just a little too common for my taste within our community. But aside from just e exhibiting the art, this, it's art with meaning and purpose and, and education. Um, and so what is it that we should expect? I mean, we've got an image of a bra. <laughs> Wait, is that your bra? Yes, yes. Um, my daughter wanted to do something to pay homage to my, my experience. And she uh, walked a marathon um, this year, this past year called Walk the Walk New York City and everyone walks in a bra and I designed a bra for her to walk in and I made myself the same bra so I call it my my colors of cancer survivor bra nice nice and so um, this exhibit is uh, multimedia M multimedia there's going to be uh, they're going to be excerpts from her blog and it's going to be the most 
passionate, the most disturbing comments uh, that will uh, that it's through the media, uh, through the media portion of, of of the exhibit, and it's also have images of uh, the hats being modeled. Uh, most of the photographs taken by Esther and the hats themselves, and it's a very timely exhibit. But it's also Esther has extended herself. She's talking. Uh, she's engaged classes at Ostos Community College because, uh, because the gallery is at Ostos, and... Yes, that's uh, your hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, no, this is great that you actually are doing the, the educational component. We're just looking at some images right now, and, um, our, you know, that flower hat that we so love here on this set. <laughs> And uh, this is another hat, and um, I just, you know, are you using the images to actually contribute to your lectures as well, or is that what you're doing? You're doing lectures, is that? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm going to talk about where the art is inspired from um, and what I'm going to do with it. I, I intended to make a calendar because I used to book radiology appointments in a hospital, and over 50% of the calls that came in were cancer-related. And um, my, my project was put on hold, and when I found out that I had cancer, I reached out to Bill and asked him to please you know, help me get this project going, because now I'm on the platform of cancer. And I want to make a calendar and have part of the proceeds help women with breast cancer. That's my purpose. Um, even though I was told the way I was told about my um, condition, my breast cancer, I felt that it was a challenge for me not to give up and throw the towel in and say, woe is me, you know, or why me, or be angry. I wanted to, to fight and fight to win and beat this, you know, cancer, this monster who doesn't even have a face. And I want to give that courage to other women so that they don't feel that, oh my God, what am I going to do? How can I do this? You can do it. I'm doing it. And, that, and that's my voice. We applaud you. Thank you. I applaud you, your strength. Um, the fact that you make hats, uh, and she makes beautiful hats, I mean beautiful hats, is so symbolic to the head and the healing. And the fact that you've been able to overcome this, it, I, I can only imagine what this exhibit is going to look like having Bill Aguado curated. And, you know, right now you're a little teary-eyed and you're making me teary-eyed, but, you know, you did it, right? You yes. did it, and, and now you're going to do this beautiful art display and you're going to help other women get through it as well, not only through exhibit your artwork through actually sharing the experience so that hopefully we can come to uh, some type of final you know preventative place because that's really the issue here yeah I do think what's extraordinary is that almost a year to the day from the time she was diagnosed to the time she had her mastectomies to the time the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the breast wall being reconstructed to this exhibit it's, it's a little over a year, a couple of days over a year. The fact that <coughs> throughout it all, I mean, I remember the first voicemail, the email I received from, I mean, I was, I was devastated. I didn't think I had the courage, but this woman did have the courage. Uh, it's a challenge for me, and um, my blog, I, I write and say what I feel whether it's, it's funny, whether it's sad, whether it's ugly, whether it's pretty. And, and I, I want that voice to be heard. I want everyone to see what I saw and to feel what I felt and to know what I know. That's what My Colors of Cancer is about. Well, this is wonderful. Thank you for taking the time to document it. Thank Pastor you. Pagan. Thank you for having oh, me. Oh, of thank course. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And thank you, Bill, for being here. And for more on, <coughs> excuse me, My Colors of Cancer opening reception, October 2nd at Longwood Arts Gallery, you can go to bronxarts.org. And if you're interested in reading some more of her blog info prior to the opening, you can go to mycolorsofcancer.com, Esther Pagan. All right, before we take a break, we uh, actually wanted to highlight some other events happening around the city this weekend. I mean, Seriously, <laughs> this weekend happens, seems to be the weekend to be in New York City. So first up, we actually have dancing in My Cockroach Killers. That's right, it's back, uh, we, Pregones is producing it again, and this time it's actually happening at the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater downtown at 304 West 47th Street in Manhattan, and that opened yesterday, September 19th, running through October 13th, and of course you can go to pregones.org for more information. 
Next, we have Bronx Grants Workshop is uh, actually happening next Wednesday, September 25th. The Bronx Grants Workshop is at 928 Simpson Street, and that's happening between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. For more information, you can go to 212 excuse me, 993-7864. And uh, last, we have a, a public hearing by Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. on the rotunda of Memorial Hall at 851 Grand Concourse. Um, that info actually is available by calling 718 Five nine zero six one two four, and then the other hearing, another hearing actually. Sorry, I thought that was the last hearing, uh, or the last event is in the music building of Lehman College, which is concerning environmental permits. And that uh, phone number to call would be seven one eight four eight two four nine seven two, and that's happening Monday, September twenty third, at six p.m. All right, so don't go anywhere. When we return, it's the sports roundup you don't want to miss. If you want hot topics, current news, fashion and device, and humor included, then Open 2.0 is a show for you. We've got it all. So tune in every Friday at 4.30 p.m. This is Bobby C. reporting from MetLife Stadium, where the third installment of the Manning Bowl wasn't a far cry from the first two. And now the New York football giants find themselves in a big 0-2 hole to start the season. We have to hang in there. We have 14 games to go. We've been 0-2 before. We've dug ourselves into a hole before and, uh, and been able to fight our way out of it. And when we did, it was by, with team, but the performance level has to come up. It was a very competitive first half for the Broncos and the G-Men. Denver led 10 to nine at halftime, and it looked like New York had a good chance of making a game of this one. But Peyton Manning and company would have the final say in the third and fourth quarters, exploding for a 41 to 23 final. Here's Peyton on the matchup with his brother and the Giants. Good, it's a good win for us. Uh, beat a good team, uh, tough, uh, tough environment to play in. So, good win. Although it wasn't a great day for the Giants here in New Jersey, it was for one star that came from the state. Here's no Sean Moreno, Denver's running back who had two touchdowns in the victory. Yeah, yeah it felt good. It felt good. Um, but like you know, any win, uh, it always feels special. It feels even even better. Uh, if we got a loss, it wouldn't feel that good. So um, we played a good team today, and, and we got the win. Seven touchdowns for the Denver Broncos in week one, and now another 41 points in week two against the Giants. Wide receiver Demarius Thomas says Denver is loaded. It is scary, you know, and we, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be glad when he scores sometimes. Sometimes I want to go on the field, but, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to watch him. And then, like you said, when everybody's clicking, you know, it's great. You know, I feel like it's hard to stop us. Big Blue sputtered into last place Sunday as Peyton and the Broncos rolled to 2 0. Peyton finished 30 of 43 for 307 yards and no interceptions. His little brother Eli went 28 of 39 for 362 yards, but it was the picks, this time four, that once again played a large role in the outcome. After 15 interceptions all of last season, Eli has seven INTs already this year. Saving grace for the Giants has to be the presence of Carolina on the schedule. Big Blue will face the 0-2 Panthers this Sunday at 1 p.m. 
The Giants and Eli have been 0-2 before and come back to win the Super Bowl. You may recall the 2007-08 season, but former linebacker Antonio Pierce, a key cog on that squad, says these Giants are not so super. The G-men usually start strong, struggle in the middle, and finish strong. This season it looks like they will have to write a different script. Speaking of scripts, how about Bronx native Doug Marone making a return to the Big Apple, this time as a head coach of an NFL team. The former Syracuse skipper who made a name for himself as a high school player at Mount St. Michael and Lehman, and then later as a college player at the Cuse before suiting up in the NFL, is now in charge in Buffalo. Marone has had a knack for Hollywood endings. He lifted Syracuse as the head coach to a pinstripe bowl crown in the Bronx and has the Bills off to a solid start. We will see if he can flip the script on the New York Jets on Sunday as the Bills come to town for a 425 kickoff. Buffalo beat Carolina last week in the closing seconds on an E.J. Manuel touchdown as the rookie QB connected with Stevie Johnson for a score. The win is Marone's first as a head coach in the NFL after years in the college ranks and previously as a coordinator in the National Football League. The Jets are coming off an extended break following the Week 2 loss to New England and Foxborough. Like the Bills, Gangrene is 1-1. One one. Head coach Rex Ryan and company has had plenty of time to prep for the Bills. Ryan also squashed speculation this week that rookie QB Matt Sims has support in the locker room as a replacement for Geno Smith. Mark Sanchez remains out and Smith will continue to get the call. Ryan says. This could be the final week of curtain calls for the legendary Mariano Rivera in the Bronx. The Yankee closer and the Bronx Bombers embark on their final regular season homestand tonight at the Big Ball Park. The Yankees lost the final game of the road trip in Toronto Thursday night, dropping the finale 6-2 to the Blue Jays. The Pinstripers pretty much have no wiggle room and may have to win the next nine games and hope other contenders fade in order to advance to the postseason. Meanwhile, the Yankees have have plenty planned for Rivera and what more than likely is his final home stand since the postseason keeps fading away. The Bombers welcome the San Francisco Giants for a three-game set this weekend. The Yankees have planned a series of promotions with Rivera's retirement in mind, including a Ty Beanie giveaway on Saturday and a Mo bobblehead on Tuesday night. The entire homestand will include various promotions and tributes to the great Rivera. The New York Post suggested this week that the city rename River Avenue out in front of the ballpark to Rivera Avenue. That would be a nice honor for Mariano. Across town, the New York Mets wrapped up their series with San Fran Thursday afternoon in a matinee in Queens. We go inside the locker room for our latest Mets Insider. After opening last weekend's series with a win against Miami Friday night, the Mets played two Saturday and split the old school doubleheader, winning the nightcap following a 3 0 loss in the late afternoon game one. Mets newcomer Dice K. Matsuzaka was rewarded with his first win in more than a year following seven innings of two-hit ball. A pair of homers backed Dice K in the 3-1 victory. Um, my fastball and slider, I didn't feel quite right about him, so I really focused on throwing my um, uh, sinker and uh, my curveball. The Mets capped the weekend series with another win over the Marlins Sunday before welcoming the reigning champion San Francisco Giants for three games Tuesday. The Giants, who like the Mets, won't advance to the postseason this October, earned an 8-5 win in Tuesday night series opener, a homecoming for one Bronx boy that made a name for himself at Columbus High School. It's awesome coming back to New York and you know, get to see the family. The family gets to see you know what's going on here. So it's been awesome. You know, it's a dream come true. You know, all the cliches you could possibly say, but you know, it's. It's the same game. As for the game, former Met Angel Pagan stole the show. He went three for three with a home run, a triple, and three RBIs. The Met faithful tipped their caps to Pagan, a former fan favorite in the Big Apple. I'm energized every day, bro. I got the same energy every day. I come to play every day, no matter where I am. You know, it happens to be in here in New York, but I, I, I go out there to play 100% every every single night, every, every day. Uh, and, uh, but, but, I, but I did feel pretty good today, so I, I can't lie about that. Wednesday night, the Amazons won in walk-off fashion behind a Josh Satin game-winning single that capped a 4-1 ninth and a 5-4 win. However, the Mets could not steal the finale Thursday, dropping the matchup 2-1. The Mets are now off to Philadelphia for a three-game weekend set before traveling to Cincinnati Monday and then back home for the final four games of the regular season next weekend. Time for some quick hitters. The Yanks will profit plenty from Rivera's retirement. So many companies have jumped all over the chance to sell merchandise centered around Moe's farewell. The injured David Wright is on track for a Friday return in Philly. The Mets, albeit out of the postseason picture, will be happy to have Wright back in the lineup against the Phils as they look to finish the season on a high note. 
NBA camps are only weeks away from starting up. The Knicks will hold their annual media day in a little over a week. There continues to be plenty of off-season chatter between the Knicks and Nets. Meta World Peace came out this week and said, I don't know who's on the Brooklyn Nets, while Paul Pierce and J.R. Smith continue to trade verbal shots. New Look Brooklyn has had fun with the exchange, but is more focused on having a healthy D. Will at the helm. Williams battling an ankle sprain is set to undergo an MRI next week. Hopefully he's okay. In the boxing world, the Mayweather-Alvarez fight, which saw another big win for the unstoppable and undefeated Mayweather, was the top grossing pay-per-view fight. So many people tuned in for that one. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for a final thought on the Yankees. Rays and then three in Houston to close the season. The Pinstripers have lost five of their last six to basically go as low as they could possibly go. Is there a chance they can still make the playoffs? Absolutely. Is it unlikely given how they've played of late? Absolutely. But to be honest, I think it may be fitting to have the final week of the season be focused on Mariano Rivera. In fact, I hope the Yankees decide to sit Moe in Houston and have his final save be either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday night in the Bronx, maybe even all three nights. This season is a little similar to their last playoffless year of 2008 where the Bombers were able to pay tribute to the old ballpark with one final game. The same should probably be said for Mo. At this point, if the playoffs are not in the cards, that's the only thing that could equal an heroic October. Head on out to Yankee Stadium this week and watch Mo in his Yankee uniform one last time. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Stay with us. More open coming up right after this. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. Barry, time is running out. According to my calculations, one in five kids in America struggles with hunger. How can so many children face hunger when there's more than enough food to feed them all? You're right, Barry. We can help solve hunger by teaming up with Feeding America to get food to hungry kids in communities across the country. Help Flint and the Feeding America Network of Food Banks get food to the people who need it in your community. Find your local Feeding America food bank at feedingamerica.org slash hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Hello, welcome back to Open. The uh, Bronx, the BX, you know, is the birthplace of hip hop and, uh, well, a new ex exhibition, a Casa, a Casita Maria, at Casita Maria, is actually celebrating all the culture and history that goes along with it. Here on set, we welcome hip hop B girl pioneer Rockefeller and Casita Maria's arts manager Aisha Jordan to tell us more. Hello, Hi. ladies, and Good welcome. Morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, thank and you. thank you for being here on this early Friday morning. Now, this wonderful, wonderful exhibit, which actually is a festival, right? Mm -hmm. Is uh, it's actually a collaboration between Casita Maria. Uh, dancing in the streets and what's another cultural yeah it's a part of the South Bronx culture trail uh, project and we, it's a two-year project the first year was focusing on Latin music and some of the cultures that came out of the Bronx so this year we're focusing on hip-hop um, and the birth of hip-hop so uh, it's a borough-wide festival with over 20 organizations having different events and being media partners um, as well as Casita Maria and dancing the streets programming throughout the borough so it's going to be really really amazing okay now as we all know bx is the birth of hip-hop and yes. you know it's uh, quite uh, an honor to have you here again yes. and again <laughs> and again well only because <laughs> I, I i personally i enjoy when we actually watch a person's growth and, and we actually document their journey along with ours yes, right yes. and i mean you and i have a history from yes we go before back we go this. back and so it, it gives me i i am very proud to yes. Not only have you here to be a friend, to be a colleague, who, to be in this game and on our grind yes. for so many years, know, and to see you documented yes. as the only Finally. woman in I this, know. In this event 
as a historical figure. Right, right. No, it's an honor. Repping it the is. Bronx. What does that feel like? No, I, I feel so, you know, like humbled, first of all, because there are many other women out there, as we all know, who are on their grind and representing hip hop on the underground. But just, you know, honored to be invited to participate and share my story. Because um, a lot of times you just see people dance or, you know, perform, and that's it. Um, but when you get to actually go in, you know, inside, behind the scenes, find out how they made their way, that's a beautiful thing because it, show, it shows people that it is possible, but you really just have to work hard, focus, and just dig your heels in. So this show, I'm just really happy to, you know, contribute. That, you know, then that's a humble way of saying it. Because <laughs> well, you know, no, it's you don't know because it, <laughs> uh, you know, I read the credits and, and you know, what you got Grandmaster Cow, oh, yeah, you've got, got Theodore, mm -hmm. got um, Joe Conzo, mm -hmm. BG 183 from the Tats that's crew, cool. that's legendary right there, yeah. um, Mr. Wiggles, and I also invited some of my you know, uh, mentors to b be a part of it. So, Zone TDK, JD, and Nice, Quick Step, of course, my husband, right, who's your like husband. the reason right, full why. Circle. Full mm -hmm. circle, right? Which is kind of the reason why um, I have become who I have through these people giving me a chance, inviting me in. So, um, you know, contrary to what most people think that, you know, hip hop is just male dominated, mm -hmm. we're here. It's just, you know, we need um, resources and platforms, and that's where Casita Maria, Dancing in the Streets, Open, you know, Bronx Net. Thank you. Um, it's giving us some light. It gives us some light so people can see, yes, they're here. Mm -hmm. Women are, uh, you know, participants and contributors to the hip hop scene. You know, and, and that now leads us into Casita Maria Aisha, right? Because you yeah. actually curate a lot of the events that go on there. Yeah. And so, so you, you mentioned, we, you know, we did the Latin last year, and now we're, we're doing the hip hop. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's still the Latin component to the hip hop right. in this year's event. So share a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, many of the pioneers, of course, are from the Bronx, are Puerto Rican, of Latin descent. Um, and it's just amazing to be able to honor some of those people. So a lot of our events are honoring some of the pioneers of hip hop. And a lot of them are Latino, are from the neighborhood, you know, and are still here. So um, some of our events, for instance, you know, we're honoring um, Rocksteady Crew as part of our breaking event. Um, and the Bronx Boys, the Bronx Boys Rockin' Crew. TBB. TBB. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the other MCs, you know, as well. Um, so we have Africa Bombada. He's going to be honored in our exhibit on October 2nd. That's kind of the kickoff day. Um, and honoring the element of knowledge. So a lot of Joe Conzo's photos, Lisa Kahan, Henry Chalflant, Ricky Flores. A lot of their photos are going to be displayed in our exhibit. Um, and just to share a little bit about those photographers. Those yeah. photographers have been documenting history for like decades yeah, yeah I, you yeah. know I, I i don't want to I, I i go into like the age factor it's like wow <laughs> yeah i know you know, it's like, wow, you, you're so feels young, like it was yesterday right? i know i'm like what <laughs> what how old are you you're like you're that's too young go to be a legend <laughs> let's not go there let's just say that you know hip-hop is a beautiful thing yeah. It, yeah and the beauty of it is that you stuck to your guns right because right. hip-hop was thought to be faded out at exactly. a certain time like a yeah. phase right right, right. Mm -hmm. it was and, and you, there's a statement that you make regarding like just certain aspects of different like trends that never faded away, right? Exactly. Well, you want to hold on to something. Of course, the each generation is gonna you know put their two cents in, and we embrace that. But we can't forget the original, the classic, mm -hmm. the reference point, the roots of it. So you know, it's just one of those things where hip hop has spanned so many you know years that there's people who are 50 who are jamming out with people who are 15 mm -hmm. so and that's the beauty I think of this urban culture that's now is global right you know and we're celebrating 40 years of it you know so it's still young but it's kind of you know had its pace and its its journey so we we're just happy I'm happy to be a part of this and we thank you yeah. for being here and sharing it with us and thank you for taking the time to make sure that you curate these artistic <laughs> aspects right. yeah. of hip hop the culture and thank you for sticking to yeah. your guys Yes, yes, Rina. Be repping us in the yes, Bronx, Rockefeller. Right, All right. right. Once again, for more about the Bronx Revolution and the Birth of Hip Hop event happening October 5th, right? It opens October 5th. Yes. You can go to casitameria.org or you can go on Facebook and check out Dancing in the Streets. They're updating regularly and Dancing in the Streets on Facebook. All right, that is our show today, people. Thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. Be sure to check out the Recablecast tonight and throughout the weekend here on BronxNet, 24 hours a day at BronxNet.org. Once again, I'm Rina Valentin, and from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide peace, prosperity, and love. Mwah. Happy International Day of Peace, everyone. Adios.